I was born in the late 70s in Ellesmere Port. My dad worked in Bogwater's paper factory while my mother was at home with me, my brother and my sister. Times were hard, they got much harder after my dad was made redundant. The 90s were much better when my dad became a plasterer and my mum went to college and studied and became an occupational therapist. The 90s were really good for me too. I always had a paper round, and then at 15 I worked as a glass collector at Sports and Social Club. I felt pretty rich having £2.50 an hour wage at 15. After leaving school at 16, I started a youth training apprenticeship as a plumber. Unfortunately, this only lasted a year. I used to have to leave Neston at 7 in the morning for Bidston, wait 45 minutes for the next train to Birkenhead, then change for Liverpool, then change again for Riversdale. After that, I'd have to walk around a mile to get to my university course, often arriving after our start time. To get home, I needed to leave early to get the last train back home, which I'd often miss. So being late and getting in early meant I was always in trouble with the teachers. Eventually, I had to leave the job because the public transport night work was costing me over about a quarter of my weekly wage and I couldn't survive on such a low income. I did a few different jobs for the next couple of years, and then at 19 I got a well-paid job in a local factory. £6 an hour in the 90s for a lad living at home with his parents was pretty good. I moved out, I lived with some friends, I passed my motorcycle, uh, motorcycle license, bought a motorcycle, and I went on holidays. Then I had a serious motorcycle accident. I could no longer do my job as it was very physical. Luckily, I got a job working in the lab as a quality control. I had learned new science skills and suffered a large pay decrease. I moved back to live with my parents and after a couple of years, received compensation payout for my accident. I invested more of the money into buying a house. Back then, the house prices were starting to increase rapidly. The large company I worked for moved from my hometown and to get there was very difficult as the public transport was awful and then I got made redundant. After this happened I had to claim benefits for the very first time. It was horrible, it felt demeaning having to sign on. I hated the stigma and the way I was treated by the staff. After a few months I got a job in a printer's and I worked my way up and became a machine operator where I was on a good wage until the 2008 crash. First we had a 10% pay cut, and then all the overtime rates stopped, and then we lost 25% of our hours each week. And this was the deal for people who were still employed. Soon the inevitable came, my redundancy. Since then, I've been on and off benefits, working for agencies, self-employed as a plasterer, some healthcare work, but I've never been paid enough to get by on. Whilst living on benefits, I cannot afford to heat my home or eat properly. So I keep chickens and I grow my own food. I often have to choose between heating my house for a short amount of time or buying food. Washing clothes is expensive too, and so is buying them. Even socks these days are very expensive when you don't have any money. Now I work in three voluntary roles gaining new skills I can use for the first time and doing work in which I love. I even managed to win a Royal Horticultural Thriving Community Garden Award at Neston Community Centre with a small team of like-minded people. I'd love to get paid work in conservation, but I don't have any money to get paid for the training to get a paid job. I'm stuck in a catch-22 situation where if I sold my house, I may have a small amount of money left to pay for my courses then I would be homeless. Or I could keep my house, which I can't afford to heat or even repair, but at least I have a roof over my head. While I do my voluntary work, because there are no jobs. I'm in poverty due to low wages, not enough jobs, untrustworthy transport, lack of academic skills. Despite that, I don't consider myself a poor person. I am rich in life, but I have no money. I'd like to thank you all for listening so intently to our stories.
us today and I'd like you to welcome all our community inspire us to take the stage.